Yes, so you guys are helping me with the, well, we're all together, we're helping each other through the, yeah. um, through the kids' talk. And we're doing a story today from um, the book of John in the New Testament. And there's a story. It's sto- about a blind man. I oh, know, right? The story of a blind man. What do we, what do we know about him? Um, that he's blind. He's <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I, I know he's really blind because he's blind. He's blind, he's really and blind. And also... There's a part in the story, probably even from the beginning, yep, yep. that um, I think it says, um, I think it's the Israelites Maybe. ask him, is it him or his parents who are res- or who have sinned that this man is has been born blind? That's exactly right. So there's mm. this really interesting question, like who, like in the in the first century. And maybe even, gee, not so very long ago, people were asking these sorts of questions like, this guy's been born blind, whose fault is it? Is it his parents that did something wrong, so he's been cursed? Or he himself somehow did something wrong? But Jesus replies, it's no one's fault. Exactly. No one's sin. I know, right? Isn't that interesting? Mm. Let's read it, the d- that exact thing that you just said. As he went along, he saw, this is Jesus, as he went along, he saw a man born, bl- born blind from birth. His disciples asked him, Rabbi... Who sinned, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? And also, yep. you know, I think I may say it. Okay. <laughs> Keep it in your head. Neither this man nor his parents sinned, Jesus said, but this happened so that the works of God might be displayed in him. We, th- we think this is a little bit um, backward, don't we? That and then he made, mu- and then he got some mud and put it on his eyes. Yep. And then he asked, and then he told him to go and wash it off. That's right. Let's read it. Just wash all the mud away. Just wash all the mud. Yeah, in a pool. A pool called Siloam. Let's read it. So Jesus said, no one sinned, but this has been done so that God's works might be displayed in him. As long as it is day, we must do the works of him who sent me. Jesus is talking about God, the Father. Night is coming when no one can work. That's weird. While I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. After saying this, he spit on the ground, this is what you guys were just saying, made some mud with his saliva, that's a bit gross, put it in the man's eyes. Go, he told him, wash in the pool of Siloam. This mean, this word means sent. So, the man went and washed and came home seeing. Whoa. His neighbours and those who hadn't formerly, sorry, his neighbours and those who had formerly seen him begging, do you know what begging is? Um, for example, a man who's blind, uh-huh. like him, Yep just sits there and uh, and pretty much asks for money. Exactly. Or sometimes you could go on your knees and do this, say, saying, I'm begging you. Exactly. Yeah. That's right. That's so it's like when you're asking really <laughs> earnestly or something for something new, that's what begging is. Sometimes and dogs beg. Yeah, I know, right? Yes, they do. It's very funny. So you've got an idea of what begging is and, and a lot of mm. humans have to do that because people won't help them. Isn't this the same man who used to sit and beg? Some claims that he was. Others said, nah, only looks like him. But he himself insisted, I am that man. How then were your eyes opened, they asked. He replied, the man they call Jesus made some mud, put it on my eyes, and he told me to wash it off. Exactly. So I went and washed, and then I could see. Where is this man, they asked him. He He has no idea. I don't know, he said. Good one. They brought him. They brought the Pharisees, uh, the man who had been born blind. Now the fact, you know, the, the the people have got this debate going on about, you know, whose fault is it that this man has been born blind? The Pharisees have got their own argument going on, and their argument is about Jesus. And it's like, is Jesus um, a sinner, or is Jesus the King that we've wo- been waiting for? King. Yeah. Well, king, some people are saying he's the King. king. And others, the Pharisees go, nah, this man yeah. breaks all the rules. He breaks the law and stuff. He can't possibly be the king we're waiting for. So they brought him to the Pharisees. And the day on which Jesus had made the man the mud and opened the man's eyes was a Sabbath. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> They're not allowed to do stuff like that on the Sabbath. Or at least all the Pharisees said they weren't allowed to. <laughs> Therefore, the Pharisees also asked him how he'd received his sight. He put mud on my eyes. Tell the story again man replied, and I washed, and now I see. Some of the Pharisees said, 
This man is not from God, for he does not keep the Sabbath. But others argued, how can a sinner perform <laughs> such signs? So everyone disagreed about it. Didn't know. But he is not a sinner. He has not sinned once in his life. Exactly. And whoever said that yep. is actually so rude. I know, right? They are and rude. And also, mum told me what yeah. Yeah. Um, Lent is about. And it's sort of, um, so um, it's about Jesus who gave up pretty much ev- like everything for us. Correct. His father couldn't look at him because he had sin. Yep. And he actually was killed on the cross. Yep. Some people say too. Yep. And what and we do to remember that is we give up something not good for us on Lent. Yeah, exactly, on Lent. Yeah, that's so uh, are you guys doing anything like that for Lent? Oh, uh, yeah. What, what um, are you giving up? I'm giving up ice cream. Okay. Whoa. I'm, I'm giving up um honey chocolate. At least I didn't give up honey chocolate. At least yeah. I didn't gi- give up ice cream. I mean TV. Oh no, that would have been very hard. <laughs> How do you guys do Lent? Do, are you guys allowed to break your fast on Sunday? Because I should probably shouldn't introduce that idea. But so some people, <laughs> some people, what they do is they they think you're not meant. Yeah. Mm-mm. Well, the way I do it is Mm-mm. is um I don't fast on the Sunday. So I break my fast for Sunday. Uh, but you can do that next year if you've already committed to um, not doing that. Also, we accidentally yeah. forgot okay. it was Lent yeah, we and accidentally had, some had ice, cream. ice cream. Yeah, that's all right. Hey, that's totally... F- everyone does that thing. So that's cool that you guys are giving up stuff for Lent because that's related to what I'm talking about today to the adults as well. Tony was thinking about giving up something that he actually didn't like. Yeah, like... Um, he doesn't like time caramel, out. Like caramel chocolate. Oh, yeah. Because that would have been a good it treat. tastes like a bird. <laughs> yeah, Jamie makes up stuff like it that. <laughs> All right, let's keep, hey, let's keep going to the yeah. end of this story. We're nearly there. We're going to get to the bit where he says, I was blind, but now I see. And then when we get there, we'll stop. He's already Other said that. So Twice. others asked, how can he be? How can a sinner perform such signs? They, div- they were divided. Then they turned again to the blind man. What have you to say about him? It was your eyes he opened. The man replied, I reckon he's a prophet. They still did not believe that he had been blind and received his sight until they sent for the man's parents. Is this your son? They asked. Is this the one you say was born blind? How is it that he can now see? We know he's our son, the parents answered, and we know he was born blind. But how he can see now... Or who opened his eyes? We don't know. Ask him. He is of age. He'll speak for himself. His parents said this because they were afraid of the Jewish leaders. They didn't want to get in trouble. Who had already decided that anyone who acknowledged that Jesus was the king would be put out of the synagogue. The synagogue was like their church. And they'd be kicked out if they said, that guy, Jesus, he's the king we've been waiting for. So, yeah. So, they were scared Mm -hmm. about that happening. Uh, Second time, they summoned the man who'd been born blind. Give glory to God by telling the truth. So, they're like, saying, you know how you say, I swear to God, and mm-hmm. like, then you definitely can't lie after you yeah. say that. Um, they were doing that kind of thing. We know he's a sinner. He replied, whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. But one thing I do know, I was blind, but now I see. That's cool, isn't it? Yeah. He's got this awesome story to tell. And one mm. more thing. Go. Well, maybe those bad, maybe those bad people thought that that blind man could just try and open his eyes. Maybe they thought that. Yes. So and tricking. They thought it was tricking. Yeah, yeah and okay. that story also reminds me of the man with leprosy. Okay. In what way? Um, well, both ways. Jesus told them to do something. Yep. Good. And they did it, and then they were clean. Well... In a little kid's story book, yeah. he actually just told everyone about it. Yeah, that's good. So mm. I guess the, s- the way I want this story to land for you guys is you guys have probably got your own stories about stuff that Jesus has done for you. Like sometimes maybe you've prayed for something and God has answered that prayer. Or other people have had other experiences where they feel like God has given them a dream and they remember that and it's been really full on. Um, 
e- o- most of us in this room have got stories about Jesus and stuff that Jesus has done. And so some people, they, they come up to us and they say, you don't really believe that God exists, do you? And they s- or they say, Jesus isn't real. And then w- I, I think one of the great things that we can say is, I don't, look, you know, I don't know about all that sort of stuff. All I know is I've had this experience of Jesus and I reckon he's real. And that's a, that, that's a pretty cool answer to some of those sorts of questions. So even if you haven't had an experience of Jesus, the more you pray and spend time with him, try to spend time with him, the more experiences you'll have. So that's kind of where I'm, that's where I'm going with that. Can I pray for you guys and for the other kids? So Jesus, thank you for these beautiful people. Um, thank you that we've all got stories, just like this blind man's got a profound story. He had to wait probably about 40 years for his story. Um, but Lord, I pray that you would just continue to be speaking to our young people, continue to give them stories to tell about you. Um, amen.